Uh, first impressions and their importance in business. Uh, whether or not you want to accept it, uh, our next guest, Carol Roth, says that uh, first impressions do dictate whether you get the job, land the new client, or make that sale. Uh, Carol Roth is a business strategist and TV personality, also an author of a, a book that we'll talk about in a bit. There it is right now, actually. Uh, the Entrepreneur Equation, Evaluating the Realities, Risks, and Rewards of Having Your Own Business. And she joins us right now from our Ch Chicago Bureau. Thanks for being with us, Carol. Patty Ann, thanks for having me. How important is that first impression? It's critical. We're all being hit with so much information nowadays. People are making snap judgments, whether it's online, in social media, flipping channels on the TV. People are really making decisions very, very quickly. So you have milliseconds to influence somebody and really make that first impression. Well, and you mentioned online, uh, you know, the whole climate has changed. It used to be that first impression was going to be either a resume mailed in or, uh, you know, a face-to-face -face meeting. How is it different now that it can be very often an online situation? Yeah, so sometimes, Patty Ann, you're actually interacting with somebody and you're behind an avatar or a picture and you don't actually get to meet the person, you don't get to shake their hands. So it's really tough because there's an additional trust gap there. It's hard to really connect with somebody when you don't know who's beyond that sort of first picture there. So you really need to make sure that you're engendering additional trust when you're online because you don't have the benefit of the in-person interaction. So how do you do that? I think one of the key things is to be authentic and to be giving first. You don't want to be out there shouting your message or promoting yourself. You want to be considered a trusted resource. So a great way to do that is to just acknowledge other people. If you're on Facebook or if you're on Twitter, first maybe retweet what they're saying, put their information out there and start building a relationship um, by giving first instead of being such a self-promoter to start with. That starts to engender trust. It starts to show that you are a curator of content and somebody that is a trusted resource. And then as you build up that relationship, then you can start with the asks. But it's really critical to first give. So uh, what if you know that it went badly? How can you repair that? <laughs> Yeah, I think that one of the key things is to just acknowledge it. If you're having a conversation with somebody named Amy and you're calling her Sandra over and over again and you finally just realize, oh my God, I've been calling her the wrong name, just admit it. Go, I am so sorry. I have been calling you the wrong name this whole time and let me tell you why I did it. It's because you reminded me of this other person who has a fantastic smile like you and I couldn't get that out of my head. So you basically acknowledge that elephant that's in the room and then you turn it into a positive make a reason why you did it that explains it in a positive light um, but you know I guess the basics though always uh, still apply first of all you've got to do your uh, research I'm not in a position of hiring but I can tell you that uh, sometimes I'll have a friend of a friend who just wants to uh, get some advice on how I got where I am in the business or whatever and I'm just shocked oh, all right I'll talk to this person for five minutes on the phone and they t call me up they have no idea who I am they don't even know which Fox I actually work for and I'm disgusted and they're not gonna get anywhere with me I mean I can only imagine what it's like for these employers people show up unprepared. They really do, and uh, like all the Boy Scouts know, you have to be prepared. I always say if you fail to prepare, prepare to fail. We have no excuse nowadays. There's a thing called Google. It's very easy to do research, not only on the company that you're applying for a job for or the company that you're pitching as a client, but the person that you're going to be speaking to. And it really shows um, almost a, a lack of care to not be prepared. Like you're just going out there and spreading your resume all over the place or that you really haven't taking the time to get to know them. And so it's really the easiest thing that you can do to make a good first impression. And it not only goes to being prepared about the company you're interviewing for, the client, but also being prepared on your own stuff. It's amazing how many people really haven't gone through their resume and don't know about them and their own background well enough to just nail it when they get in there, Patty Ann. And so, you know, spend the time to practice and to really put in that time for preparation because this is a dress rehearsal for what it's going to be like going forward whether when you get a job or if you're going to be working with a client what you set as that first intention is how they're going to um, believe you're going to behave on a go-forward basis so nail it right from the start uh, I have a panelist here with me Scott Blakeman he has a question for you 
Well, first, Carol, sure. I just want to say that you uh, make an excellent first impression. <laughs> and um, I, I wonder if your advice would work on the online dating sites that I frequent quite a bit. But my question, though, is uh, I'm a comedian. I'm wondering, in, in an interview situation, how important or risky can employing humor be? You know, Scott, it's a really great question because humor is one of those things that can be either comedy for one or comedy for everyone, <laughs> right? So you may think it's really, really funny. And if you don't know the person's sense of humor that well, it can be really misperceived. And the same thing goes in the online arena. When you write something down, you don't get to hear that voice inflection or see the, you know, the funny smirk that comes along with it with your great style. And so sometimes that can just really fall flat. So I think you have to know your audience. And if it's somebody who really appreciates appreciates that you might want to take the risk if you're not sure maybe build up that trust relationship first and then test it out slowly mm. all right uh, we do want to mention uh, briefly your book the entrepreneur equation uh, what are some of the uh, risks and rewards of uh, starting your own small business there are so many risks and rewards, Patty, and I think the challenge is that a lot of entrepreneurs go into business not really thinking about them. They don't think about the financial implications, and they don't think about the quality of life implications, and they don't make sure that the risks and rewards balance out. The rewards at the end of the day have to be much greater than the risks that you take on. I, I always go back to one of my favorite game shows, which is Let's Make a Deal. And if you were standing there with the two curtains and you said, okay, I've got $49,000 and I'm going to trade it for a chance at two curtains. One has zero and one has $50,000. You'd never make that trade on a game show. But entrepreneurs do that all of the time in business. And so it's really critical, again, to be prepared to do the homework and make sure that the risks and rewards balance out at the end of the day. All right. Good advice. Carol Roth, thank you so much for joining us from Chicago. Thanks. Thanks for having me.